Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to be shedding light on the problems appertaining to not earning a livable wage. What are they, you may ask? Without further ado, without further delay, allow me to demystify that answer to that inquiry right here, right now. Unfortunately, lamentably, nothing salubrious can ever ensue from not earning a livable wage. The ramifications appertaining to not earning a livable wage can indeed be eminently direful, to say the least. They can unequivocally be ineffably calamitous. So what are some of the problems associated with not earning a livable wage? Well, you're the more prone to become destitute, indigent, impoverished, and of course, insurmountably indebted. Your chronic stress, chronic fatigue, chronic burnout, and chronic inflammation are also or the more apt to remain unmitigated if you're not earning a livable wage. Because if you're not earning a livable wage, that means that you have to work in perpetuity to maintain your low standard of living with a 0% chance for retirement. People work real prospect jobs based on volunteer demand or often work in highly time-consuming, dead-end, minimum wage, dispiriting, unfulfilling, undesirable, harrowing, distressful, really wretched jobs that do not even pay anywhere close to even one-fourth of a subsistence wage. Working real price sector jobs based on volunteer demand impinges on every facet of their life. It undermines their well-being. And it cannot provide someone with a prosperous, auspicious, abundant, blissful future if they're not earning even a liberal wage. So it preempts them from being able to have a future, preempts them from being able to reach their higher aspirations and attain their overarching goals because their time is relinquished to their employer and there is a 0% chance for retirement when they're not receiving a liberal wage. When you do not earn a livable wage, your standard of living remains egregiously low. It's all the more susceptible to further precipitously plunging into the abyss as the cost of living amplifies to an unprecedented height and as your hourly wage does not amplify even to a negligible degree, remains flat and furnishes you with decreased purchasing power as the dollar further erodes over time as a result of it becoming devalued due to inflationary increases in the economy. You lose purchasing power every year as your wage remains flat. In life, you want to progress. You want to be able to move your life in a forward movement trajectory. You never want to stagnate nor regress. When your only source of income is derived from a private sector employer who doesn't even pay you anywhere close to even one-fourth of a subsistence wage, your future is apt to be bleak grim and direful, unfortunately, because you're entrapped in wage slavery if you choose to work a real private sector job based on voluntary demand that does not pay a liberal wage. And being entrapped in wage slavery means that not only do you have an egregiously low standard of living, but you cannot sleep when you're fatigued, you cannot eat when you're famished, you cannot partake in stress relieving activities when you're stressed out and you have no time to pursue your overarching goals nor any time to work towards reaching your higher aspirations because your employer owns your time. They're exploiting you for cheap labor. You're renting yourself out to your employer. And they deem two hours of your time 
as an assistant manager to be commensurate to one second of the CEO's time. In other words, if the CEO were to work for 15 hours, he would gross more revenue than an assistant manager would gross post-working for 104,000 hours over the course of half of a century or 50 years or five decades. So after working five decades full-time for 2,080 hours per year or 104,000 hours over the course of five decades, he will still gross less than the CEO grosses in under 15 hours. That's a disparity in wealth between the CEO and the system manager they deem his time to be worth at least 734,000. I'm sorry, I meant to say they deem his time to be worth at least 743,000% more than the system manager. And if anything, that disparity in wealth, that disparity in pay is apt to amplify to an unprecedented height in the pending future is slated to amplify over time since CEOs are earning record high salaries. So when you're not earning a liberal wage, the outcome can indeed be ineffably direful and no fastness. When you work a real price circuit job based on voluntary demand, you're borrowing equity of your time, your life, your health, your happiness, your dignity, and your future wealth just for a pittance of a non-subsistence wage so that you do not lose your vessel to starvation. The death by starvation crisis is so pervasive that someone passes away from starvation about every 3.4 seconds. So over 9 million people per year perish from starvation. This can be preempted, but employers will never acquiesce to paying their employees a liberal wage, even though their employees are the backbone of their profitability and profound success. So, unfortunately, it is what it is. Is it reprehensible? Is it deplorable? Is it repugnant? It is unfortunate that they are, rec are recalcitrant about even paying their employees a subsistence wage. But it is what it is, unfortunately. If you want a liberal wage, then you need to be profoundly successful as an entrepreneur. Unless you can attain a position as an executive or as a CEO. So, once again, to recapitulate, succinctly stated, the bridge summary is that the problems appertaining to not earning a liberal wage are that it reduces your quality of li it reduces your quality of life. undermines your wellness, causes you to have an egregiously low standard of living, and renders you the more apt to succumb to insurmountable debt, destitution, indigence, chronic poverty, and causes your quality of life to slump into the abyss, metaphorically speaking. So, nothing beneficent can ensue from not earning a level wage. It is indeed calamitous. It is indeed tragic. And it also increases your mortality rate and leads to telomere shortening because of all the chronic stress and chronic burnout and chronic inflammation induced from working a dead end, highly time consuming, minimum wage, dispiriting, unfulfilling, undesirable, heroic, distressful, really wretched 
job does not even pay anywhere close to even one-fourth of a subsistence wage. These real price sector jobs based on voluntary demand not only compromise your house and perniciously pervade every facet of your life and drain all of your sacrosanct and dispensable finite precious time, but also preempt you from being able to have any modicum of a future because they dispossess you of your time and they never provide you with enough revenue to even make the minimum payments on your bills. So when your time is no longer your own, you cannot eat when you're famished, you cannot sleep when you are fatigued, you cannot even drink water when you're parched. I hope that you found this video to be insightful and enthralling. Have a blissful day. Goodbye.